So the 2019 SA Sports Awards are upon us. They'll take place on the 10th of November this year. Last year, Casa Semenya was the big winner. The Olympic 800-meter champion walked away with Sports Star of the Year, Sports Woman of the Year, and the People's Choice Awards. To chat about this year's awards, we have the Minister of Sports, Arts, and Culture, Nati Mteto. A very good morning, and welcome to Morning Live. Morning. Thank you very much. This is going to be your first sports award. Yes, absolutely. How has it been uh, absorbing sports into the department? Well, uh, Good. Um, we have been, uh, you know, exposed to excellence around us, uh, and and the process is where it is now. We are ready uh, for the 11th of November uh, for all categories. Uh, what is important for us is that <coughs> we have the public participation, which is very key, uh, where public is able and given an opportunity to make their choice, uh, as it were. So we're happy and ready. Uh, Minister, when you came and absorbed the department, uh, the awards were already a full, fully-fledged, well-established thing. What value do you see in these awards? Well, the value is that uh, you recognize people, you recognize excellence, uh, you encourage uh, both uh, the athletes and the sporting board bodies, uh, and generally the sporting fraternity, to do more, uh, to push more uh, on service delivery, for instance, if you talk confederation mm -hmm. and the federations, uh, if you talk sport pers personalities. So it's mainly about how do we raise this very important aspect of our life and the persons, the actors uh, therein, uh, so that the society follows, society support even more and understand uh, the importance of a, an active nation uh, as it were and uh, this is what we are aiming to build that if you look for instance broadly in sport and recreation um, just last Sunday we had the big walk we striving by all means uh, to have everybody in society participating but excellence is one thing we highlight it's something that's quite difficult, one would imagine, to manage, to focus on mass participation and things like the big walk and getting schools active and having a national school championships, but then also ensuring that our elite athletes are celebrated, recognized and supported. It is, uh, but it's something which has to be done. Uh, it has to be done because uh, <coughs> what is important is that when, when people put their all, in sport uh, and when they do they go an extra mile um, you don't want other people outside of your national borders to recognize them and not yourself um, it, it, it's also a challenge to get the whole of society uh, being active but cr the creation of platforms like uh, the uh, the big work for instance has, has pointed to the fact that people are ready uh, South Africans are fit more than what people are saying, but uh, it's a question of creating platforms uh, for everybody to come out there and uh, show their sporting side or athlete side. Okay, so let's speak a little bit about uh, this year's awards. Uh, we're expecting a, another star-studded event. Uh, we have got fantastic sportsmen and women. Uh, what new features are we going to see in 2019, if any? Well, uh, each year what is new is uh, what comes out of uh, the process. Uh, who then are the individuals, lucky individuals or excellent individuals? It may not be the same uh, as previous years, but sometimes it, it may be the same if people feel that uh, you still deserve to be recognized, um, it, it, it will remain the same then. You mentioned that you would like to see the public getting involved. There's one category where they are able to do that. You've seen the list of nominees. South Africa is going to see who the nominees are in just a short while's time here on the program as we build up towards 9 o'clock. Uh, we're going to have a on the show so do stay with us and we're going to be focusing in on all of uh, the things having to do with the national sports awards but are you happy with the list of nominees 
Well, I am. Um, it's, firstly, I'm happy with the fact that we're trying by all means to be as broad as possible and have all the categories, uh, <coughs> 19 of them, including the ministerial excellence, uh, including the uh, Steve Chouette uh, Lifetime Awards. So in the past few years, we have seen a lot of, you know, new emerging athletes from different uh, sporting codes and um, the nominations themselves are pointing to that that uh, you would have a little bit of what you you've been exposed to in terms of individual athletes but you also have a, a, a whole body of new and emerging uh, uh, shall i say people's choice as nominees as as we said earlier on they stand a chance. They are nominees. The big day is on the 11th of November. So, Minister, I see you are wearing your Springbok shirt. Uh, we're waiting to see who the box will go up against in the quarterfinals at the Rugby World Cup. They have already qualified, ending second in their pool. I want to know, what is your favourite sport? What sport did you grow up playing? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, football. Okay. Yes, uh, it's football and, uh, well, growing up uh, supporting uh, one of the local teams uh, in South Africa. You can't tell us, you. Uh, I'll tell you one day. <laughs> 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 one of the, of the teams. But uh, football, because uh, I think that uh, in the main, uh, in the townships, in rural areas of the province of KwaZulu-Natal, uh, football has been the most popular sport. It remains the most popular sport uh, so we yeah uh, and I played you played oh, what yes. position um, the left uh, back okay uh, all the left uh, and the left wing okay uh, and in the middle uh, playing the left side okay so yeah. when you were younger who was like your football star like your football hero well uh, is the late uh, Oscar Jasmine Lamini. Okay. Yeah, uh, who, who played uh, more or less similar positions. I, he passed on last year, I think. May his soul rest in peace. Can we assume then that you are going to be focusing in on what's happening at the South African Football Association mm -hmm. and ensuring that we get our national teams up to the level that South Africans expect them to be? Well, we should, because, look, sport is the number one uh, favorite. Uh, I mean, football is the number one uh, sport favorite in the country. Uh, and things are not going well. Uh, we, we, we can't do better uh, than where we, we are at the moment. Uh, we will. We will. Um, <coughs> it doesn't mean that uh, we won't be, you know, focusing on other sporting codes. But uh, as the number one uh, uh, Spotting code uh, loved by all South Africans. That is why uh, we, during our budget vote, uh, uh, did indicate that we are going to have Indaba, uh, particularly on football, and, and get everybody on board and see how do we move beyond where we are, uh, get to the, to the international stage, and, and, and be a factor there. So we, 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 we definitely are going to be focusing uh, on, on, on football and, uh, and politics of football. We have uh, a lot of, uh, uh, we have a lot to offer to the world yeah. because of who we are as a nation, mm -hmm. because of uh, the long history, our long history in football uh, particularly. Uh, one would say that you've actually got an enviable department because you get all the fun stuff. You've got sports, arts and culture, but because of how close they are to all South Africans' hearts, it's also very difficult to manage that. I have to ask you about the uh, Vatiswandacha <coughs> meeting that you had yesterday. It obviously blew up in social media this past week. What came out of that meeting with her? Well, really, I, I, I called her to understand more. Uh, what what she was saying, uh, and, and, and must I say that uh, the the issues she's raising uh, are not new. Uh, we are aware of those issues very much so. Um, so what what really came out of the meeting was one, 
uh, to encourage her uh, to do more uh, standing for the performers, but also pointing to her that our job as lawmakers is to make laws. And we have done as much as possible to that effect. As you know that the uh, two bills, the copyright the amendment bill <coughs> and the performance protection uh, bill uh, on the desk of the president uh, for assent. But the difficulty, and that's what I pointed to here, the difficulty is that the, the industry is talking in different uh, voices. Some are saying that the, pros the president should sign like yesterday. Others are saying, no, there are issues with the specialty copyright, so this must not be signed. What I'm saying, therefore, is that until we hear one voice from the industry, lawmakers have done what they could. It's quite difficult, though. I mean, Vatiso was on the show yesterday and speaking about the pressure that she's feeling, because although these are well-known issues, she's the only one that's really kind of stood up and made it a, made it a hugely public debate. Well, it, it, and it was a, a welcome public debate uh, to, to underscore the challenge. Some people didn't even know about uh, the life of a performer. Um, but you see, the, the thing is that the entire uh, fraternity has its own challenges. That includes performers, it includes producers themselves. They too have challenges. In the sense that one of the things they are raising is that as creators, um, their work get exploited by multinationals and other people. Mm. So therefore, both of them are in a situation where exploitation has to be fought from different angles. Um, and uh, they, they then have to, that's why I'm, I'm emphasizing that at this point, there is nothing government can do, but they can do something as an industry. It's going to be very difficult to get these two parties that are in the industry that have got very different objectives to actually speak with one voice. One of the things we are emphasizing to them is that the producers are artists as well. Uh, at one point, they were performers, and some of them as producers, continue to be performers. So therefore, they should find each other uh, insofar as the challenges uh, of the industry are, are concerned. Because otherwise, they are, only, they, are, they are only barriers at this point in time. Uh, Minister, one of the issues that uh, Vatis were raised was that broadcasters aren't transparent. Is there anything that your department or that government can do to ensure that that changes? As I say, uh, as I said earlier on, these two pieces of legislation are, are game changers, if I may say. They go deeper to the issues of royalties. Um, they also have what we call the Copyright Tribunal, uh, which would be resident uh, eight judges who would be looking into the issues of, of, of copyright, as it were. That also includes the contractual regime which uh, uh, performers and their producers uh, have. As, as things stand at the moment, uh, that lack of transparency is as a result of, of a skewed uh, power relations where you have somebody coming to Jobek purely from, you know, to uh, demonstrate his or her talent uh, on the one hand, uh, but also having you know, some producers with legal, legal eagles who have all the resources at their disposal. So these two pieces of legislation go a long way. I must acknowledge that, um, especially from the creators and producers side, that they, they raise the kind of things uh, which they, they say are a hindrance. But remember, this has been a, a process which involved public through public hearings in parliament and so on. And the actual process started in 2013 as it was finalized earlier this year. Minister, can I ask that you come back uh, when you have a chance to actually speak about what ICASA's new rulings regarding sports broadcasting may be in the future? Yeah, no, we'll do. Remember, they still have to give us the report. 
Lovely stuff. Thank, Thank you very you. much. That's our Minister of Sports, Arts and Culture, Natiem Tetwa. Uh, it is, of course, his baby, the 2019 South African Sports Awards, which you will be seeing the nominees for revealed right here on Morning Live. So